We have reached yachatz, which is Hebrew for to split or to break. There are three matzahs on our table. We break the middle matzah in two. We leave the smaller piece on the table for the blessing over the matzah, which will come later. And we save the larger piece for the afikoman, which is the dessert of the Seder. Now, the most common explanation for breaking the matzah is that matzah is lechem oni, or the bread of poverty. And poor people are rarely able to enjoy a full piece of bread. Instead, they break their bread into smaller pieces to share with others who are also in need or to save the rest for later. But why do we break the matzah at this point in the Seder? After all, we could have set the table in advance with broken matzahs, just as we set the table with other symbolic foods. Or we could break the matzah right before we say the blessings and eat matzah for the first time. Why do we break the matzah now, right before we begin telling the story of the Exodus from Egypt? Rabbi Joseph Soloveitchik taught that Pesach is, among other things, a holiday of solidarity. This includes solidarity between those of us who are blessed with plenty and those that are not. In other words, between the haves and the have-nots. The Rav noted that even in Egypt, not all Jews were slaves. There was a huge gap, as there is today, between those who were wealthy and paid high taxes but did not have to do physical labor, and those who were literally groaning under their burdens. And so in Egypt, where matzah was the bread that our ancestors ate, the Rav says that one had a matzah and one had none. The former split the matzah in two and passed half to his unfortunate brother. The act of breaking the matzah is thus the perfect introduction to halach ma'anya, which comes next in our Seder and describes the bread of affliction. Thanks to yachatz, our bread of affliction has just been broken into pieces. We who live with the blessings of plenty must share our matzahs with the needy. We do this by supporting the most vulnerable through our private philanthropy, including the good work of the Jewish federations that I have the privilege of serving and so many other organizations. And we do it also through our government, a bastion and beacon of freedom, the United States of America. This year especially, we express our appreciation to the USDA for taking important steps to ensure that those who are in need of food and observe the Jewish dietary laws are able to obtain kosher food, and to all those who work each day to ensure that our entire nation and all of humanity have bread to eat. And now to introduce the next section of our Seder, I'm pleased to welcome the world-renowned Maccabees.